Hey guys, back again doing another weekend project. Today we're going to do something simple, easy, and fixable. We're going to change the passenger uh, CV axle on this 2009 Mazda 3. Pretty, pretty simple job. Uh, if you're at home, make sure you use proper jack stands whenever you're working on your vehicle. The uh, reason why we're going to remove the CV axle is because I previously did a timing chain um, replacement on this uh, vehicle and the CV boot. Uh, was completely torn. You can see a lot of the the gush of the oil that came out uh, the grease So go ahead first thing first. We're gonna go ahead and put the vehicle Up in the air if you're at home go ahead and just make sure it's properly uh, supported by your jack stands and uh, We'll get this uh, process started. Enjoy guys So this is the actual uh, CV axle we'll be removing um, This is the part number in case you're interested and uh, brand new lifetime warranty to the axle. Um, this axle came with the um, axle nut, so make sure that when you do your job, replace it with the new axle nut just because we're going to have to stake that uh, as well. Alright, so let's go in the uh, first step first, we're going to remove that tire. Okay guys, so once you remove the tire, uh, you're going to go ahead and expose the CV axle. This is the passenger side, and this is the reason why I'm changing uh, this axle, because it has a big rip here, and uh, I noticed that has been sipping for a while since I know a lot of gunk, grease gunk on this side, and also it's pretty gunky on this side. Um, so uh, the reason why I'm changing is because if I don't change it now, the weather elements, when the rain, the water, it's going to get in there, and then it's going to dry that up. And it's gonna start making noises as the bearings will uh, become dry so first things first the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and disconnect the ABS uh, connector we're just gonna go ahead and kind of pull it out of the way there's a tab here that you can press on and then once you press it it's gonna come loose like so and then we're just gonna go ahead and remove this just push it towards you and it's just a rubber small gourmet that we're going to go ahead and just get out of the way and then we're just going to go ahead and just keep it out of harm's way so let me go ahead and see if I can get this with one hand alright and then when you put it back you just slide it in there and again we're just going to get it out of the way so uh, you don't damage it you can just snug it in there like so alright and the next step we're going to go ahead and remove uh, the tie rod in so let me go ahead and uh, Get this out, out of the way. This little cotter pin. Let's see if I get a. Uh, here we go. Just gonna use some uh, cutters to kind of pull this out, like so. All right. So once you remove that cotter pin, we're gonna go ahead and remove this 14 millimeter nut. So once you remove this nut, there's two options. You can remove this um, uh, tie rod in. You can use a Thor hammer, like so, and just hit it here. Or if you have access to a uh, tie rod end puller, you could go ahead and uh, put this bad boy in here. And I'm gonna be honest with you. I prefer this method first best of all just because it's easier for me and I don't damage um, any parts but if you do this method you want to make sure that you align uh, the bolt and you align the tie rod and bolt as well and I believe this is a 19 millimeter uh, I think it is yes and so I'm going to go ahead and ratchet this bad boy. Again, whatever whatever you have at your disposal, you can use it. And I believe that's where it came off. So let's go ahead and go to the next step, guys. And once you remove the tie rod in, this is a good time for you to inspect the tie rod itself. As you can see, 
this has a lot of play so the inner tie rod uh, you could tell is pretty much shock and also uh, this uh, outer uh, tie rod see how it has so much play and the boots already ripped so I'm gonna talk to the customer to see if uh, they want to go ahead and change the inner and outer tie rod if they do that's another video that I'm gonna definitely um, show you guys okay but let's go ahead and continue um, now that we have that uh, outer tie rod the next step we're gonna go ahead and uh, change the we're gonna go ahead and remove the stabilizer control uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove uh, this one right here so that one once we remove this one um, we can we're able to maneuver the actual uh, steering knuckle so let's go ahead and take that off and I believe that's a uh, that's also a uh, 14 millimeter uh, nut so let me go and remove that real quick uh, there we go and just make sure that you put back the support bracket um, when you put everything back oops and again this is just supporting this okay this is gonna also be holding that uh, ABS uh, as well so this we're just gonna go ahead and remove it and you know what this is completely shock as well so I'm gonna tell the customer that uh, we should definitely replace this just because it's completely out so man this job's turning into a I mean it's great for me because I get paid either way but I kind of feel bad for the customer just because since I'm doing this work already look at that it's no bueno no good um, all right so that's a different story so let's go ahead and continue all right guys so next step we're gonna go ahead and remove the lower ball joint uh, it's basically a 14 millimeter nut that uh, we have to zip off in case that nut moves you could also put a 14 millimeter wrench here to hold it in place uh, let's see if we get lucky there we go guys all right that nut really came through here we go And this bolt you could just pull it out of the way like so I'm just gonna go ahead and put it here so that way I don't lose it and then uh, we're gonna go ahead and separate uh, the lower the lower ball joint um, I'm sorry the, we're gonna separate the steering knuckle from the lower control arm you could either use a uh, long uh, breaker bar um, to kind of uh, separate it or I have this really cool tool that I'm going to use so I can separate that uh, uh, lower control arm from the uh, steering knuckle. So I'm going to do that real quick. And in case you're interested how this tool works, uh, it's a good investment if you work on cars a lot. Um, if you don't, you probably use it maybe two times a year, but I use it periodically. So the way it works is that this uh, clip is going to go on top of there, and then this clip it's gonna go underneath the vehicle so this is gonna look like and then you have that leverage to pull down and that's gonna go ahead and force that uh, uh, lower control arm to kind of come down so let me show you how that looks like see that and that's gonna go ahead and uh, free it up uh, and again good investment you can buy this at Amazon for about 80 bucks and uh, you don't have to it took me literally like 10 seconds to remove this or another option is to uh, use a uh, Thor hammer and just pound that down uh, but whatever it's your preference and now that we have this out of the way it's a good time to ins inspect the lower bar joint and like I suspected um, that's gonna also be need to be changed just because it's completely ripped and uh, I'm in sunny California so when it gets uh, 
when it gets really cold the it could get condensed and water and dry that up so I'm going to talk to the customers see if uh, they want to replace that as well um, all right so now that we have that completely done we're going to go ahead and remove uh, this uh, CV axle nut now this is a 32 millimeter um, socket they're going to have to use um, luckily I have one here so let me go ahead and see if uh, this Milwaukee 250 nut busting reverse torque takes it out let's see is it full oh you know what it's not it's not properly charged it looks like it wants to is doing it I wasn't able to uh, zip it out. No worries, guys. I know I could always count on my Ingress rant to uh, zip this bad boy out. And again, this uh, specific uh, axle doesn't have a stake, so we don't have to worry about that from happening. So let me get this uh, impact going. Let's see if this bad boy could zip it out. Here we go, guys. There we go, like butter. 1,100 reverse foot pounds. All right. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go ahead and see if I can, if this pushes out. Oh, perfect. So it's not rusted inside, so it comes out just by pushing it. So that's good. If it didn't come out, what you can do? You can hit it with the mallet or a punch. Hit it right in the middle and just punch it out that normally does the job or you could just go ahead and put this uh, axle nut and you could also just tap it and that should um, also um, free it in case it was rusted in there but in our case it came out really free so we're good and remember do not reuse the axle nut your CB axle should have come with a new one just like mine did okay so let's go and go to the next step all right guys, so I raced the vehicle just so I can kind of get you guys an idea. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and push the CV axle out from the steering knuckle. Just gonna go to remove it. All right guys, once you remove it out of the way, uh, make sure you uh, be careful when you take this out. So once you remove the CV axle, um, I raised the vehicle up so I can show you guys what it looks like. So you're gonna come on this side and you see uh, this piece uh, of the axle we're gonna go ahead and gingerly pry this out okay you can use uh, they actually have a, a special tool to remove this uh, as well I don't have it but uh, I'm gonna use a mallet or if you're lucky you could actually grab your hand and just see if it comes out maybe just pull it out by force nope so let me go ahead and get that mallet and uh, I'll continue but again you're gonna have to just hit it either here or here and it should come out all right so let me go ahead and uh, get that mallet here real quick okay guys so to remove uh, the CV axle I got a mallet and I'm gonna hit it right here in this corner I'm gonna tap it and then I'm gonna go ahead and turn this axle and I'm gonna continue tapping it kind of break it free like so and I'm gonna continue doing the same thing try to get that all the way around and it's coming out see that now it's gonna free up now in case depending on where you live in the 
uh, country if yours is literally rusted in there what you can do um, you can use a pry bar like this and you could actually put it here in the middle and then you could just hit it with the mallet right there on this top um, and that's going to go ahead and free that bad boy up um, again they do have a special tool for this unfortunately I don't have mine I let somebody borrow it and uh, never return it now I'm paying the price but again see if you hit it see how it's coming out and I live in sunny sunny California so I don't really have to worry about the uh, like in the Midwest it gets snowy salt and stuff like that mine is about to come out using a mallet and then once you have that in the way separate it you could just push this out and it should be coming out see how it's, it's free oh there we go let me catch that all right and we free this up like so and just like any other part you definitely want to go ahead and compare it again see how much that was ripped and you also want to go ahead and make sure that the new one same size same length if yours had a, a ABS ring um, you definitely want to go ahead and uh, remove the old one and put on a new one this one doesn't have one so we're good to go now that you have uh, make sure everything is the same <coughs> what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put a little bit of uh, anti-seize on uh, on this uh, CV shaft so that way if it ever does get replaced customer wants to take it out uh, since this one does have a lifetime warranty they could go ahead and uh, swap it out and they're gonna struggle like I did today so I'm just gonna go ahead and put a dab there and we should be good to go all right so I'm going to remove this as well and let's get this bad boy installed and again just make sure they're the same length this is the same length like that one and we're good to go so let's go ahead and put this bad boy back And remember that spline I told you about also this is a good time to check uh, if there's any play sorry about that if there's any play up here sometimes uh, make sure that the ring here there's a little ring here that needs to uh, stay there so when you install a new one it's gonna hold but this is a good time to check to see if there's any play if there is you would have to change uh, this here as well well, this is pretty solid so we're good to go so remember that uh, that uh, spline when you do install it back in there make sure you look at it that way you don't fight it all right so let me go and install this bad boy pretty straightforward put that in there like so if you have somebody helping you that's perfect if not you could definitely go ahead and manage this and we're going to go ahead and line up those blinds and we're going to go ahead and put that back and then we're going to put everything back together i'm going to put this torque specs on the video uh to uh, according to service manual this has to be torqued at and also i'm going to put the torques uh for the um tie right in here and i'm going to put the torque specs for the ball joint lower ball joint to the steering knuckle here um, but before I'm not gonna put everything back together just because I'm gonna talk to the customer to see if they want to go ahead and repair the other the other pieces like this um, since uh, and the sway bar link since I already basically uh, has uh, seen better days and then we'll go from there but everything straightforward I hope this video helped you out subscribe like comment have a blessed day take care guys